Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present the Starship for the Raptor 9 rocket and I've decided to call that Starship Lex. Now this is not L-E-X-X -X, which is a sci-fi series and a spaceship shaped in the shape of a dragonfly. No, this is L-E-X and it is a Jurassic Park reference. And actually I think I'll be calling the Raptor 9 rocket Unix because in Jurassic Park the Unix system was used to contain the raptors, and Lex is the girl from Jurassic Park who understood Unix, remember, and also had a raptor on her tail. I hope that's not too obscure. But anyway, I've already sort of uh, teased the situation here. So basically, um, and we need to make sure that this is the root part. Uh, okay, no, it is the root part. Okay, fine. Uh, so, right, uh, this is the tank, actually temporarily I want this tank to be the root part so that I can do what I'm going to do, which is to remove the heat shield and the pod. So this is the second stage that we had before when I tested Raptor 9 rocket previously. And what we have is a new heat shield part that gets slapped on to the bottom here. Uh, that obviously adds extra mass. I calculated the mass of the heat tiles that would be necessary for that area. And then we also have this bit here. Now this bit looks quite different from that bit, unlike Starship, which all looks like a sort of unified thing. And there are multiple reasons for that. First of all, I realized that, first, uh, I mean, we only have one Raptor engine at the bottom on the tail here. So that's inconvenient for landing and it's a vacuum engine. So that's a little bit of a problem. So what I realized was that the landing engines for the Starship lunar mission, you know, uh, these, right? The Starship lunar mission has three engines on either side. Well, that's enough thrust to land the Starship on the moon. So it happens that it wouldn't be too bad for these things to land a smaller ship like Lex on Earth, uh, which has six times the gravity, but this has a whole lot less mass. So that's what we're doing. Uh, also, as a side bonus, with the Ford RCS tanks inside the pod, these can be used as an escape system, just like Super Dracos. So I've given them the same thrust as the Starship Lunar Mission had in the previous video on that. And uh, we've got parachutes on top here, you see. Uh, not the best positioning, we could work on that, but uh, you get the picture. Uh, this can use these as an escape system, just like Dragon would, and then parachute down. And this is a decoupler piece here. This uh, is a pod decoupler. So basically there's a piece here and then the decoupler there. Also we have a hatch. Now this can be used in a cargo version or a crude version, but I don't have a crude pod. I have DEX. So crude, uh, uncrewed pod, you know, for cargo and all, it looks like this. And that's the Ford RCS tank there. I even put little tubes for, I mean, I guess they, the propellant would probably go underneath. It would probably go down and then back up into these. But anyway, I simplified. Uh, so there's a lower deck and there's uh, room for cargo underneath. Uh, probably that'd be like the food, water and oxygen tanks and stuff like that. Anyway, but uh, there's a lower deck and then there is an upper deck. And these are pretty large decks. Uh, for reference, uh, this opening here is 1.5 meters. And yes, there is a gap, there is a collider on this, and you can see that instead of having a normal pod, I've decided to put command chairs, and we have eight of them here. So, that is the thing. I think that might, I mean, it's just an alternate arrangement. There's no point having another version of the same starship exactly, right? Uh, so I've decided to try something different, as I do. And this is the different thing that I decided to try. Now, similarly, the fin configuration is going to be different. The aerodynamics is, of this is going to be different anyway, because the relative mass of the situation is different. So we're going to have to work out on that. Uh, otherwise, we still have just the one uh, Raptor vacuum engine here, because we're using those thrusters up there uh, for landing. And let's see just in general how things work. Uh, the pod is not that heavy, if we take a look uh, without fuel. Uh, 26 tons without fuel, uh, which, I mean, uh, considering its scale, it's much smaller than the Starship. 
Uh, I mean, fully fueled, it's about a quarter of the size of Starship. So it might be a little bit light, but we're also not carrying all the stuff right now. But four times this is 104 tons, 108 tons, somewhere around there. And that seems about right for the empty mass of Starship. And so we're, we're about a quarter of the fuel and everything. So, yeah, I mean, actually a little bit less than a quarter of the fuel. 262 tons is pretty low, which means that this could be refueled by, I mean, not fully, fully refueled, but mostly refueled by two starships. So that's a benefit if we don't need to uh, do the full starship refueling, which is like 10 at the moment or eight, something like that. Okay, yep, let's uh, go for it. And let's put some Kerbals in for amusement. We can do it like this these days. Uh, let's have a Medic. <laughs> Jeb and a Medic, that seems good. Let's just have two. Of course, technically this way, um, the images will have them in their spacesuits. So that's downside, but there, there are interior decorating upsides. I don't know why it was down the electric charge and why it needs to top that off right now. Okay, first of all, maybe we should try a pad abort sort of situation. Oh, I have the abort action group. Now, the pad abort, well, there's a bit of a problem with G-forces. Remember, we don't have the fins on yet. I have to figure out exactly what fin combination would be best, and uh, that's going to be different than what it is for Starship. Uh, partly also because the way the Starship back ones actuate, I don't think Kerbal even understands properly, but uh, even if we get them actuating properly, I don't know if it can control it properly like that. So... Anyway, um, if we do the abort action group... Oh, maybe I should throttle up first. Um, okay, maybe that needs to be reaction grouped. Okay, so that and then the decoupler. Let's put SAS and RCS on just for the heck of it. And... Okay, there we go. Oh, uh, no, I want to be here. Okay. Not that many G-forces, but you can see we have a lot of G-forces. The problem is we have so much G-forces that flips around and rips apart and we've lost our Kerbals because the decks are separate parts. <laughs> um, so that's a problem. We do need some fins to make sure it's stabilized and it's not gonna flip around like this. Uh, that's why Star uh, Dragon has those fins on the trunk. So it turns out that there's a good reason for it. But we certainly have enough thrust to get off uh, the, the rest of the rocket. And this is not going to end well, because we also lost our parachutes. Um, yeah, so... See, this is why they do abort tests. It turns out it doesn't always work. Yep. Yep, definitely a problem. Oh, can we land on the V? Not really. That's not... That's the SPH, actually. There was another part that got destroyed there, too. Lots of parts got destroyed without this actually destroying itself. Raise hatch. Maybe we should do an in-flight abort and see how that works. I'll have less aerodynamic stress on it because it's not as low in the atmosphere. Where SpaceX did it, it wasn't as low in the atmosphere, so that helps. But of course they also did a surface abort test with the Dragon Pod anyway. Okay, so we'll do an in-flight abort test. Um, we'll have to add fins later. We'll see how the in-flight abort works. So SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. launch. Incidentally, the whole system is less mass than Starship is. Fully fueled. Uh, I don't know why the stage time isn't reading. I wanted to make sure we had 20 seconds, but let's say we abort here. Uh, let me make sure I'm controlling from here, geez. From, from here? Alright. Abort. And we're aborting with the engines firing. Well, that's not good. See, we need fins. Otherwise, we could tumble back into the thing. Okay. And parachute. Um, okay. Rocket's still going over there. Let's make sure our parachutes are configured properly. The Ford RCS, uh, Ford RCS is pretty heavy, actually. It's like six tons of RCS. I might want to cut down on that. I was using the full volume of that tank in front. Um, 
I think we could do with not using the full volume of that tank in front, so that might be an improvement. With just this Ford RCS, it probably has some trouble controlling roll, too. Okay, alright. Hopefully it'll stay there. Now, of course, if I had made the pod in just as just one part, uh, things would not rip apart during the abort on the surface abort test. Okay, pretty high G-forces coming down here. And the Kerbals will be fine in that. Oh, it does want to flip around, but uh, it's safe for the part that needs to be safe. Okay, we are slowing down. And it looks like the parachute stopped being armed somehow, so let me try that again. Okay, 9 meters per second. A little bit faster than I would have liked. Uh, maybe because we're carrying a little bit of extra fuel still. We'll see how this does. Okay, a uh, bit of a splashdown issue here. Uh, well, okay. Well, it is what it is. I think that's acceptable. Alright, so it's possible they could survive something. That's the point. Now let's get to orbit. Now it's pretty obvious that it can get to orbit. And the purpose of the orbital test is actually... I don't know why uh, the, refueling the electric charge increases the vessel mass. That's weird. Anyway, uh, but and I don't know why it has to do that anyway. I don't know why we are short food, water, and oxygen. There's so many questions. Oh, is there a little food, water, and oxygen for the individual seats? I did not realize that. Okay, uh, or the Kerbals themselves, because they're in the seats. Alright, anyway, ignition. The purpose is to figure out how much fuel we have left in the Lex. Which will tell us how many refueling trips we will need to top it off. How much Delta V will we end up with? I mean, you can see we have lots of Delta V now. Of course, we're going to be shutting this stage off early. 20 seconds is what we're going to re reserve for a return to launch site landing. And then we'll see. Now, this staging is weird. That's fine. No. Yes. Yes. Okay. Doing pretty well. And let's throttle down a bit. Okay, shut down, and separation ignition. Okay. We proceed, we should activate RCS because we need the ability to control roll with one engine, otherwise we don't. Now, of course, the lunar engines would have a lower nozzle a uh, higher nozzle ratio to be more vacuum optimized these have a lower nozzle ratio so that's been taken into account so the isps of uh, these are different uh, than the lunar starships uh, engines for landing uh, these have a different isp but about the same thrust it's uh, the isp breakdown between sea level and vacuum that's different I don't know if the sort of steel upper look and then the LRSI side look with the heat tiles at the bottom, sort of a Neapolitan thing going or something. Uh, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Uh, they are hex tiles. There we go. We can sort of see a little bit of a texture issue there, but otherwise they are the Canon hex tiles. Okay, well, it's not really giving me the stage delta V here. I'm gonna... let me see. Okay, now that I've created a dummy stage there, it does. We'd probably want to carry some more cargo, though. We're practically carrying nothing at this point. But alright. Uh, 204 by 187. We've got 2014 meters per second left, so not bad. Um, we're at 58 tons. So, yeah, probably just two trips with uh, Starship will do it. Maybe 
even less depending on how things turn out with Starship and how we rate the engines. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, we could do all sorts of activities here uh, without doing any further uh, refueling. That's possible. And raise the hatch. Hey, there are Kerbals. They can EVA in here too. Uh, if we get, if you get the camera in and get them out of their seats, let's test that. Because uh, there's a collider all the way around. In fact, um, okay, but the problem is the camera. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 okay, so leave seat. Oh, okay. Mm, okay, let's see us. Make sure. Bump. Okay, good. Bump. 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 Hey, back, 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 back. Oh, can't see anymore. Can't see anymore. Okay. Uh. Okay. Uh, let's try and get to lower deck. Um. Up. I can't see. Her. Uh. No. Okay. No. No. Okay, we want to go to the lower deck here. So the decks are separate parts. Uh, you can get all the parts. Of course, I'm going to link it in the video description. And you can find all the parts by typing in LEX for Lex. Okay, so down into the lower deck. And then you can put whatever other stuff you want in here, of course. And let's make sure that the lower deck walls are solid. Yes. Very good, the RCS forward tank. Uh, oh, that's not so solid. <laughs> Whoops, I need to put a collider on that. Okay, they can fall through the RCS tank there. That's not good. Okay, uh, I can't see anything right now. Oh, there we go. Can we get her back to her seat? Or was it Jeb that I got? Or no, Gurgard. Okay, good. Um, up, up. Uh, board command seat. All right. Successful internal excursion. All right. Well, hey, uh, it could be interesting. It could be interesting. That's all I'm saying. So maybe this is the start of a brand new future in Kerbal Space Program. Who knows? But uh, with this, and again, I'll link the Raptor 9 folder in the video description. If you previously uh, downloaded that, you can just overwrite everything. You need to, otherwise you won't have the bottom node for the heat shield part down here. So there's Lexpod, Lexpod tank tiles, there's the decoupler, there's the pod, and then the two uh, surfaces inside the upper deck and the lower deck. All right. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.